It's the 17th of December and it's time for the 17th entry in my 24 ghost stories for Christmas. Once again, this is another entry in the fantastic BBC series, A Ghost Story for Christmas, where I got the name for this series from. I know, I know, I keep doing them, but, you know, really, I hate to keep reiterating it, but this is the greatest example of the ghost story genre on television, in my opinion. So, this entry is the 1974 episode, which was The Treasure of Abbott Thomas. The M.R. James story was quite faithfully adapted, but certain elements were um, added to flesh out the story, and it was no, no longer told in flashback. Um, it was actually told within the sort of present tense. The story follows a man called Reverend Summerton, who is investigating and researching a local monastery. He has been given access to their uh, library, and he comes across a description of a man called Abbot Thomas who used to uh, live in the monastery. He was at one time found guilty of witchcraft and alchemy and um, the legend had it that he had hid a bunch of gold that he had turned from like lead or, or other um, other elements and you know and he turned that into gold and he then hidden the treasure away somewhere in and around the monastery. The Reverend Summerton isn't so um, interested in the gold, he's more interested in the account of this man and just the local history of it, but he does start to investigate and he starts to find clues hidden around the monastery as to where this treasure may be. He is ably assisted by his protege who is actually a local lord or a young lord at that. Summerton has already performed a favour for um, his protege by helping him debunk a group of mediums who were preying on the Lord's mother um, because she was in grief. So we, that's the opening scene or the opening scenes where we actually see Reverend Summerton using his critical faculties because although he's a man of the cloth, he is all about uh, the logical and about being rational and he manages to debunk these uh, psychics who were really um, con artists. So the Lord then helps um, Reverend Summerton investigate these uh, these clues that have been l left around, like a, like a sort of trail of breadcrumbs around the monastery so that he can find out where this treasure is. And as he goes along, Reverend Summerton becomes more, and his protege as well, but they become more and more involved, more and more um, almost borderline obsessed with this treasure and where it might be. The word of caution to them is that the myth states that Abbot Thomas left a guardian to look over the treasure so that should anyone find it they would perhaps come to quite a sticky end. That's as far as I'll go but I think you can tell that uh, Reverend Summerton does at some point find the gold and his encounter with the guardian um, does not go well. So it's first of all it benefits once again from being shot in 16mm film I can't stress this enough at that time in British television they would shoot exterior um, scenes in uh, 16mm film but then they would go and shoot uh, interior scenes um, on video and first of all the change between those two is really quite jarring you can see it right away even if you don't really look at what film is opposed to video you can tell the difference right away um, also just the atmosphere which shooting on film gives this series is present in the treasure of Abbott Thomas the use of light and shade is fantastic and it really just gives this creepy atmosphere much like other um, adaptations for the ghost story uh, for Christmas it does revolve around seeing perhaps a, a figure or just hearing noises not really seeing a great deal but what I do love about it is that there's no cop out in this series you do see the ghosts in this series you do see them you do see what's chasing these people and that is a recurring theme of going in search of something like in a, a warning to the curious and then 
um, finding what you're looking for and trying to get away from it, you know, because something is trying to hunt you down. We also see that in Whistling I'll Come To You, where um, the hero, the protagonist, is being stalked by some sort of supernatural force which takes the shape of some figure off in the distance. The uh, the lead uh, is played by Michael Bryant, who plays Reverend Summerton, and you may remember him from when, uh, the Amicus film, um, Torture Garden. He was in the segment where, um, was it Torture Garden? I think it was Torture Garden, where uh, the nephew uh, executes, executes, it sounds like he's got a gun, uh, murders his uncle, and um, there's a whole sort of witchcraft thing in that, in that story. Uh, if you want to hear about that though, you can go and watch the video I did on that. Um, so, anyway, Treasure of Abbott Thomas, Michael Bryant's fantastic in it. Uh, the atmosphere is wonderful. It's definitely one of the strongest entries. Again, most of the entries in this series are extremely, um, are, are really, really strong. There's only one entry I haven't seen, which is the last entry, which was the Ice House. The, the last two entries in this series where um, originals, they weren't adapted, they weren't period pieces, and I think it really suffered from that, and that's probably why it came to its end. But um, the the period adaptations of M.R. James' ghost stories are all fantastic. The Lost Hearts, which I'm not going to talk about, um, I'm not going to do an entry in this, is the only one which I think is a, a bit weak, because they show the ghosts too much. The Treasure of Thomas gets it just right. Um, you get to see just creepy faces and things moving around in the darkness and, and that is um, quite frightening. So that is the 17th entry in my 24 Ghost Stories for Christmas. I'll be back tomorrow with the 18th entry and it's a goodie.